Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Hoarder, the Seven Days to Die Horde based building series where each week we come up with some strange new creation and throw it against the Day 70 insane zombie horde, and then we score it based on how well it does. My name is Rosh Nex, and today I'm going to be building something a little bit simpler that I think is going to work pretty darn well. I'm kind of going after the high score that we set last week with cheese base. I want to see if, uh, if we can make something that'll get close to or beat that and be something a little bit more realistic, uh, something a little bit more fun, something that I would actually use in the survival series. So. If you do find yourself enjoying this video at any point, leave me a like, maybe subscribe to my channel, help me grow. Doesn't take you but a couple of seconds and I do appreciate it. That's enough out of me, let's start building. I made a unicorn. Everybody, I made a unicorn. You may have thought they were fairy tale creatures that didn't exist, but I made one. And you can't you can't argue that because you don't know what unicorns look like. And this could be it. This could be peak unicorn form, okay? Anyways, let's get into the base and go over some of the key features. There aren't many. This is um Pretty simple base compared to a lot of the stuff I've been making lately. But I really wanted to uh, go back to my roots a little bit here. We're going to roll a uh, sniper with the penetrator skill. Uh, that's my favorite in the entire game, so I'm pretty excited about it. We've also got an M60 and uh, unmodified... Well, it's modified, it just I'm not skilled into turrets at all, but we do have a sledge turret. So... Uh, pretty standard base, right? Elevated a little bit, single pathway for them to get up and walk towards me. First thing that's kind of funky is the row of half blocks here. Those are there for two reasons. The first is that they're going to provide a little bit of extra protection if I accidentally pop a demo on there. Uh, it'll have to go through a little bit more bridge before it actually just fails and I you know, die a tragic, terrible death while you all watch me. The second reason that's there is because I was a little concerned if I was firing uh, straight down a row of zombie heads, that that might be right around button height on a demo and I might hit one accidentally. This way, I'm kind of going to be shooting down at the Zeds a little bit, the normal Zeds, as they walk up to us because I'm half a block taller than them. 
and I think I'm going to reduce my risk of popping that button accidentally at least a little bit. Um, and it's it's going to keep the demo head height basically straight out from me. So I should have a pretty easy time picking them out of the crowd too. And that goes for any of the taller zombies, cops, spikers, uh, whites, whoever. Um, our primary mode of defense is going to be people, essentially zombies, falling off of this beam instead of actually beating on the blocks that are between me and them. Um, I am a little concerned that they're going to swing up. This The unicorn horn here is actually going to be uh, preventing them from jumping on each other's heads and instead just kind of piling up into each other's backs and hopefully, hopefully forcing a lot of people that are at the back of the conga line off the bridge. So we'll see if that pans out. They might swipe up at this. And if they do, it's probably going to cause a fair amount of issues for me. I don't have a whole lot of defense from the top of my base. So if there's a bunch of Zeds up there, especially Radiateds or other strong guys, then uh, I'm going to have a hard time with that. Um, getting into the blocks that are actually between me and them. These are all wood poles that have been upgraded to reinforced concrete. So this is four wooden poles arranged uh, so that they're all in the same corner to make a little corner quarter block, excuse me. Um, and I, I tested this very briefly. Uh, I made a pole, <laughs> a pole out of poles, a pole, pole, stood on it and made a zombie come hit it. Figured out they actually don't deal increased damage to the reinforced concrete poles, which I thought they did, to be honest with you. Uh, it kind of makes sense to me that they should do that because why would this little pole of concrete have just as much health as a cubic meter of reinforced concrete? Uh, and I understand that can be hard to do for a game, so it makes sense that the zombies would just deal bonus damage against smaller blocks therefore they would essentially have less total health anyways we're gonna give these a go uh, it does mean that the zombies are going to have 10 total blocks between them and me so this is gonna be pretty darn strong i can't repair any of these from where i'm gonna be standing um, these are kind of all just sacrificial and to be honest with you, by day 70, if you have to replace four, eight uh, rebar frames and and uh, the concrete associated with that, that's going to be a pretty darn successful horde night. So for this series, uh, that might forsake some points for this base. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be realistic here um, and just say, hey, you know, you only had to replace a couple of blocks. You're still doing pretty darn good. So the last line of defense between me and them are these two arrow slits here. I think I'm going to make these steel. They're just reinforced concrete right now. Um, and my little hidey hole in here, which whoa, with some hidden beer coolers that my girlfriend put in here for me. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to just sit in here with my sniper rifle and my M60. Uh, I have a way to shoot birds as they come at me. I'm going to have great line of sight for zombies walking up my bridge. And the last thing that I think might be kind of cool about this is I always have a hard time dealing with spider monkeys and zombie dogs in particular. They really stink. So this design here... Uh, assuming they can get past the sledge turret here, will actually allow the zombies, um, the dogs and the monkeys to, I think they can just walk right under these. This block gap here is at least a full block tall, if not a little bit more. So they should be able to just kind of walk right up to me here, and then I can M60 them in the face. Assuming they get past the sludgy, of course. Anyways, that's about as much talking as I wanted to do about this one. We'll go ahead and roll it forward to the day seven. Just make sure that they don't decide to beat on the base of the tower because there's too much concrete between them and me or something like that. We don't need to see much. And uh, I'll bring you guys back. So here we are starting the day seven test. 
I didn't make any changes yet. I still think I want to put my air slits to steel, but we'll see how it goes. We really just want to make sure that there isn't too much concrete in between them and me. These guys are proving exactly that uh, concern. They are still going to choose, even coming from all the way back here. Hey, get with the program, man. That they would rather run all the way around and hit those poles instead of the base of my tower. That guy, not really sure why he got mad at the tower for a second there, but I think we're pretty we're pretty solid on this. We'll go ahead. We'll just uh, check my view from in here. Pretty solid on the run up. The shorter zombies are leans and stuff. It's going to be a little bit harder to get their heads once they're all stacked up in here. I didn't really foresee that being an issue, but it seems like it might be. That is about all I needed to see. Take care of all these guys real quick. We'll hit our base with some repairs. I, I do think I'm going to upgrade my arrow slits to steel just to be on the safe side. And then we'll roll this whole thing forward into the day 70 insane zombie horde. I'll catch you guys in a minute. All right. So, it's day 70. The horde is on their way. We are going to go ahead and make sure we have AP in our sniper rifle because we want to get that maximum penetration. Giggity. Also, make sure the M60 is reloaded. And here we go. Let's knock this one out. Sit down, Eger. Or man in Eger suit. Oh, he might blow up now that he's down there. Oh, well. Yeah, he blew up. Just ain't care, man. Just ain't care. I'm not here to click heads. I really take names. That sounds arduous. I don't want to do that. Man, if I could shoot, this would be a lot easier, I think. Why does why does every zombie in this game have to wiggle their head so much? Why is that why is that a thing? Like zombie movies and stuff, you see them just walking around like a friggin' bobblehead? No, that's not a thing. These guys are all out here acting like they're uh, a freaking zombie hula girl on someone's dashboard. Oh, just stay still, man. It's okay. Just accept it. I'll put you out of your misery. It'll be quick and painless, I promise. Also getting in the bottom left of the screen right now there's a plus 50% with a green reticle that's because I am getting plus 50% damage from getting so many consecutive kills in a row it starts at 30% after your first kill and if you get more kills quickly enough it goes all the way up to 50% which is pretty excellent when uh, when dealing with hordes of zombies as it turns out you get a lot of kills very quickly this way isn't that exciting <laughs> So it's also really going to help us when some of the harder to kill zombies show up. We get that extra extra damage because we're not putting that many rounds down range. Oh, Arlene's crawling though. But the rounds that we are putting down range, they're doing a heck of a lot of damage, man.
You know what, with how quickly time went by, how quickly this is over, I'm, uh... I was gonna say upset that one cop blew up on me, and then another one blew up on me. So you know what, I kind of deserved it, I think, but I'm still upset about it, all right? about made him do a backflip, man. Who else we got? Who's who's stuck? Oh. Is that it? Did we do it? Unfortunate there that we're not going to get the uh, no damage taken. We're also not gonna get the no blocks broken. We ended up losing two of the poles here. But that was uh, that was a handily defeated horde if I've ever seen one. They didn't really swipe up the way that I thought they would. They kind of just ran up here, hit these poles and were like, nah, man, I'll see myself out. Thank you. <laughs> My sludgy boy didn't have to do anything. To be honest with you, doing this again, I uh, I think I would have I think I would have moved the sledge into a more offensive position over here so that he could hit stuff off of the first line of defenses. But I got kind of concerned that they were going to break through that quick and then my sledge wasn't really going to do anything all night. You know what I mean? So definitely could have done this base up a little bit more offensive. I think I think we needed less supports around the base of this. That would have saved us a lot of materials. Um, all in all, Crushed it. Like, I can't believe it. I was only about 400 kills, so not quite uh, not quite the cheese base levels, but a solid showing nonetheless. And uh, I wasn't I wasn't worried at all. We have to replace uh, two concrete blocks, essentially, and some other minor repairs. And other than that, this horde base is ready to go again. So as far as the survival base goes, this this one feels pretty top-notch to me so let's give it some points shall we this base used no stacks of iron i know we used a couple blocks worth of forged steel and we used a vault door but all of my stacks of everything are being rounded up or down depending on where they land right so we didn't get more than um 3,000 iron or half of a stack consumed, which means we don't take away any points. It also ended up using four stacks of concrete for minus 20 points. On the plus side of things, the base was successful. That's plus 20 points. We didn't use any healing items. That's plus 10 points. We didn't have to repair anything in order to make it through the horde. Another plus 10 points. Puts the grand total for the unicorn at 120 gosh dang points. We get a lot closer than I thought we would to the cheese base levels. And once this was done, I was kind of running through my replay and wondering what I could have done just a little bit differently to try to get it over the edge and, and beat the cheese base. And what I came up with was this. If I had pushed the sledge turret out, to protect the first row of poles and then put those first two poles up to steel, we both wouldn't have used enough iron to lose points for a full stack. And I think we would have saved those two poles from breaking overnight, giving us the no blocks broken bonus points. The last thing that I could have done was just open my eyes, I guess, and uh, back up when cops were about to explode in my face. The other thing is, if we had done what I just said, chances are the sledge turret would have knocked those cops off of the beam before they could explode in my face. And if we had gotten the bonus points for no blocks breaking as well as the bonus points for not taking any damage, this base would have been at 140 points and actually beat the cheese base. So pretty exciting. This base has a lot of promise. I think it's maybe my favorite design so far for a cheap but robust survival series kind of horde base it really puts you front and center and you could have this done super quick and then you know you're set till set till at least day 70 
So with all that said and all that done, I hope everybody out there is staying healthy and staying safe and having a great day today. I'll catch you in the next one.